check, check. Hello, hello. All right, everybody. Let me know in the comments section how things are sounding. Uh, I'm using a little bit different setup because I hooked up some of my um, my pedals, so we can um, we can actually play a little guitar today. <laughs> Since it's just me, Matthew uh, is home with the fam. His kiddos are uh, and his wife are are feeling a little under the weather, so. Uh, I'm just, uh, gonna be hanging out. Uh, this is really loud in my, my headphones. I don't know. Hopefully it's not too loud for, for you guys. Um, but yeah, so first off, thanks for joining me. This is the, uh, Mythos Weekly Gear Roundup. We're going to talk about some new gear that has come out this week. Uh, you guys are going to be my, my, uh, little helpers <laughs> reminding me all the stuff that has been released, but I, I, ha I think I have the, the two biggest highlights. And, uh, like I said, oh, oh, it's turned on. I brought my, uh, Brazilian Murphy lab and, uh, we're going to have some pedals here. You can kind of see, you can see the Olympus here. So we're going to, um, uh, it's a little hot. Okay. We can, I can adjust. Give me, give me a second on that. Um, but we're going to hear some, here's some of the pedals and, uh, up at the top of the screen, you can see, uh, use cu uh, cu <laughs> coupon code Olympus to get free shipping in the USA this weekend. Uh, we've been doing this for the live stream. So if you're, um, if you're shopping at mythospedals.com, um, on anything, merch, plastics, uh, tone caps, that sort of stuff. Use code Olympus and um, you can get free shipping in the States. So uh, first off, I'm going to I'll rein back my my microphone a little bit. Hopefully that's a little less uh, in your face. It does sound a little crispy in my, my ears, but um, hopefully it's, <laughs> it's all right. But okay, so first things first, um, I think we talked a little bit about this last week but it became official this week gibson epiphone are, are further blurring the lines between uh their their lines blurring the lines between their lines mm, uh on uh, their their new range of um inspired by custom epiphones so if you somehow miss this and i don't believe that that most of you did a lot of the Epiphones that previously had had their uh, their updated Epiphone headstock, they've gone to the the classic Gibson headstock, which I think is pretty rad. Um, I have a lot of thoughts about this. Uh, whoa, okay. <laughs> but um, basically all the guitars that are more or less inspired by Gibson Custom Shop, the higher end stuff, the more vintage spec stuff, are uh, now sporting not 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 only just um, the new headstocks, but a lot of appointments that are way more akin to what they would be on the highest of high end uh, uh, Gibsons out there. So, uh, Brian in the chat says, "Does the VOS finish on the Epif Epiphone look over overly matte?" And I agree, it does. Uh, Richard Clark says that you can buff it out and you can, but, uh, I kind of agree with that. It's a bit more VOS than VOS. It kind of looks like some of the older VOS stuff from the 2010s and stuff, but basically we've got the 59 Les Paul standard, which has custom buckers, which is, you know, it's a cool thing. It's a hefty upgrade. I'm not a huge fan of those pickups, but you know, still that's a, that's an expensive upgrade. Uh, the 63 Les Paul with the Maestro Les Paul custom, Three pickup, rad. The fifty nine three fifty five, which uh, is is pretty cool, pretty sharp looking. On the Les Paul Custom, this is the one that I'm honestly the most interested in. And then we've got some other acoustics, which I think are cool. A forty two Banner J forty five, so like a you know like a war time uh, J forty five. The uh, SJ two hundred, which is like a J two hundred. Um, well, no, 
sorry, SJ, Southern Jumbo. So that's 57. Uh, the cool thing about this is on the mustache bridge, it's actually open now. I used to Epiphone the mustache bridge, a little curled up mustache. Uh, it was like just all one big hunk of, of rosewood. And now they've actually cut it out like it's supposed to be. And I think it looks pretty sharp. Um, and then we've got some stuff that you guys have seen before. So first things first on this, and I think the thing that everyone is kind of moaning about is despite the fact that they went so far in replicating the headstock, which I think, you know, let's see if we can get a close up picture here. Bam. Um, the Epiphone headstock, there's, you know, this, this version looks really good. It looks like some of the old Japanese stuff. I've had some Epiphone Japanese Epiphones that had the open book and I, I, you know, looked basically like this, except they have the two uh, screw truss rod cover, but they've done the wide bevel on the truss rod cover. And I think, I, I think it looks okay. I'm not too annoyed by it. <laughs> it's one of those things that that's, it, despite whatever the shape of the headstock is for, for a lot of us Gibson nuts, um, that little three screw truss rod cover just looks off for some reason. Uh, and I definitely think the headstock is not as long as a normal Gibson headstock, but it looks really, it looks really nice. But the thing that's kind of a, a just a bit of a kick in the, in the pants uh, is that it's still Indian Laurel. So I think that when I initially saw this, I saw it on Tommen's website and it mentioned that the, the fretboard was actually rosewood and I got, I got really excited, but, um, it is laurel. Uh, I do think what Epiphone has been putting on the guitars is, is a vast improvement. Uh, it's a lot deeper, darker looking than what it, the laurel used to be, but still, I don't know. I feel like for $1,300, it should have, uh, it should have rosewood. So, um, Richard, 59 standard kit is an exceptional Epiphone. It really is. They're really awesome. Uh, wish they were 999 instead of 1300. I, you know, I, I, I agree. I think, you know, they're, they're taking great strides in making these but really as top shelf as you can get. And honestly, for me, and I've mentioned this so many times, I feel like Epiphone is just knocking it out of the park with their quality and and everything you know i love the fact that the pit guard on this is a single ply non-beveled pit guard like those small details are really really important to a nerd like me and i do think that this guitar let's see it is coming in some really nice finishes not crazy about the tobacco burst never have that's like that's like classic epiphone <laughs> looking finish to me um the wash cherry looks pretty good uh the factory burst looks pretty good and i think this iced tea burst that's the one that's the one to get in my opinion but um, it, it's pretty odd that there's no rosewood on these. And I think that's the thing that I think holds them back from truly being like just, just, a, just a flat out um, problem for like the Gibson standard line. I wish they had rosewood. Now, I believe... Uh, Let's see if I can get back here. It's put, taking me through all the finishes. Um, that the custom has ebony. So let's let's look at let's look at the Les Paul custom here. Ebony fretboard. So, I mean, this one I think is pretty sick. Um, I, I'm like really loving this. I kind of think that of all the guitars of this this run the sg custom and the les paul custom are the ones to get because it i don't know the fact that it's got an ebony board uh I'm not a fan of the bridge on this um it's kind of got that big goofy i wish it had just an abr1 style uh thing um and again i'm not a huge fan of the the 490 uh, and the 498 pickups never have been i know that you know, that's like a classic Les Paul custom thing, but bah, I love that the case interior is yellow. That's amazing. Um, but the guitar itself, uh, let's see if I can get find the headstock on this thing. Looks really good. I think it looks really good. I'm sure it is not real mother of pearl. Um, well, mother of pearl block inlays and oh, mother of pearl split diamond 
an Epiphone logo. So it says it's a it's a Mother of Pearl headstock. So that's, I don't know, this is pretty rad. I'm really, um, really, really, really curious about this guitar. Um, I've kind of, I find it kind of odd that it's still the same price as the 59. I mean, I know it's just like, just, it is what it is. But, um, you know, I, I know a lot of people are going to moan about the price. So let me know in the, in the comment section what you guys think about that. Because to me, um, like, I kind of get it. I, I do think, you know, I have the, the Kirk Hammett V kind of hidden behind the Soldano back there. And I think it's an incredibly high quality guitar. I wouldn't, I, if I had the fret ends and everything super professionally done and you blindfolded me I, I couldn't tell the difference between it and a gibson um but i'm i don't know I, I think i think they are a little pricey for for what they are now granted they have a nice case really high-end pickups whether i like them or not you can't deny that they're expensive and they sell uh in the in the used market for good prices so i don't know for me if i was going to get something like this i would grab one I would try to go play them, find the one that spoke to me, and got them, sell those pickups, and then put something simple and, and you know, maybe a little less uh, expensive in these guitars just because, I don't know, I like I like trying to find the really affordable pickups that sound really good in, in these sort of guitars. I really like GFS pickups and all that stuff, but I, I'm really, um, I'm, I'm really impressed. I, I, I do think, despite the price being a little high... Uh, I mean, you know, this custom SG is $1,500. I still, I still really like it. Um, and, and honestly, the price isn't that crazy to me. I think when you consider how high quality that these Epiphones have been as of late, that there's really not much to, to get up in arms about. I know a lot of people are, but I don't know. I'm, I'm a big fan of it. I think Epiphone has been just absolutely killing it. And uh, just the price of everything is going up. Everything is more expensive now. So, eh. Uh, Dylan Adams, hey man. Nick Miller asked a good question. Oop, there we go. Uh, if you have one of the earlier Epiphone 59s, would you consider trading it in for one of these new ones? You love these, but that headstock really has you thinking. I think that is going to be one of the things that so many people are going to struggle with with these guitars, you know, it's like, man, you've 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 got the guitar that's killer, and then they release this, and it's got more of the look. And I, I feel like a lot of people are going to do that. I think we're going to see um, an influx of of Epiphones and 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 that sort of stuff going to trade in towards these these new guitars because why wouldn't you, you know, if, if you want that style of guitar and you're not going to spend an extra thousand dollars or more on uh, a Gibson. I don't know. I think that's going to be something that we're going to see uh, happen a lot uh, in the future. But who knows? What about the fret quality? You know, the 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 Flying V that I got is great. The Les Paul Special that we did the mod video on. Sorry, my, my chair is super noisy. Um, the frets on that were great. They were a little pokey on the end, you know, th that that's going to be the case for any import guitar, uh, unless they do a, a, a massive QC check uh, in the States. And even then, you know, uh, when the, the weather changes, the humidity changes, they're going to move. Uh, that Epiphone SG, I traded a guitar for that. And the frets on, on that need a little love. Um, but all in all, it sounds great and it plays really well. Uh... Let's see. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of people talking about uh, all the different quality that, you know, from Epiphone over the years or what you could get in, in you know, if you had the same amount of money, like what would you spend it on? Um, and I, I think that's a really valid point. So, um. Okay, this is hard doing it by yourself, by the way. <laughs> so moving right along, the next thing I wanted to talk about, and the other big news is PRS 
And by the way, thank you guys for the, the thumbs up. That helps promote the stream. So give it give it a thumbs up. Uh, thank you, Jacob, for reminding the fine folks in the in the comment section. But PRS just announced an update to their S2 line. So for those that know me, you know I love my my uh, PRS guitars. And uh, the S2 stuff has always been like the best bang for your buck. Now, for the longest time, they were using import electronics. They were still made in the States uh, when they transitioned to the new Nitro and whatnot. Uh, the S2s went along with it, so they were all the new PRS Nitro. But this year, they are upgrading all of these guitars with USA pickups. So it's pretty cool. Um, I think that transitioning to this is going to put PRS in an inter interesting place. The only thing that happened in doing this... Uh, is that the prices have, have gone up because you went from having import pickups, which admittedly sounded really good, to having USA pickups, which uh, it's just going to be, you know, it's just going to be more expensive. USA electronics, all that stuff is going to raise the price. Now, I do think that these guitars, uh, for the money you're going to spend on them, you're not going to find really a better instrument at, at this price point. But, uh, what do you guys think about this? I think that it's it's um it's a bold move to not only, you know, do the same pickups but also raise the price of these guitars, which are already you know, they're not cheap guitars. They're an American-made guitar, but now you're just looking at a bit more of a premium for these guitars. My favorite of the whole bunch is of course the Vela and now the Vela has like the narrow field in the neck and then an updated pickup in the bridge. They used to have the, the kind of like the Starla thing. This is a new version of that. And uh, I don't know, color me curious, but I think that the Vela is the best representation of what the S2 line should be. I, I genuinely, genuinely love these guitars and think that they just just play so well. They look so cool. They're so different. And I wish that the S2 line, uh, if I had to offer any criticism, I wish they were a little bit further from the, the core line because like, you know, custom 24, uh, I think the 2408, that's a cool thing. But, um, you know, I think where, where these sort of lines excel is in doing something different and interesting. You know, I don't even mind the standard line here with uh, the pick guard because uh, the standard 24, because it's so different. And I think that that's kind of like where this line should, should kind of live at. I mean, it's, it's totally different for sure. Um, you know, different carve on the top, uh, different tops period. But I, uh, I don't know. I'm curious. I'd, I'd love to play some of these. So, um, let me know what you guys think about that. Is there anything else that we should talk about while uh, we'll answer some comments here? Uh, let me know what other gears come out or things that we should we should be um, we should be talking about. So, all right. Do I think? Good question, Jacob. Do I think they're going to raise the prices for the core and custom again? Maybe. I mean, they raised them a few years ago. And it was a pretty significant raise. Um, I mean, a lot of stuff jumped by almost a thousand bucks. So they might. Um, I do think PRS are worth it. I think that they are, uh, of all the, you know, the big electric guitar manufacturers in the United States, they make uh, things with no compromises, no flaws. Uh, everything they do is is bespoke to them. And I think they're just... They're, they're a remarkable company making remarkable products and, and they really love what they do. And I have the utmost respect for, um, for them. Uh, Miles. Okay, here we go. Looking for, can I make this bigger? Oh, this is your picture. <laughs> Looking for, here we go. PAF recommendations for an Epiphone Les Paul 50s. Something clear, lower output. You've heard good things about Lawler Imperials, um, Bare Knuckle Stormy Monday. So Lawler Imperials, I mean, maybe the low wines are supposed to be. They are, um, 
they're not PAFs. They're not made to be PAF replicas. They're a different type of pickup, which is fine. Uh, and they do sound pretty good. I'm not a huge fan of Imperials. Uh, Stormy Mondays are awesome. They they sound great. Uh, if you want a true PAF thing, the only bad thing about bare knuckle is they're, they're normally potted, which, I mean, bad is, is a relative term, but uh, vintage PAFs were never potted. Um, so the true PAF sound... I think that's part of the, um, the the formula. You can't pot them. Uh, but, I mean, for an Epiphone, you don't have to go too crazy. I think something like uh, the Duncan uh, Seth Lover set would be great. Or if you want to spend a little more, maybe Antiquities. Uh, I think DiMarzio, uh, their PAF Master, or their 36th, 30, 35th anniversary. The, the anniversary PAF pickups, those are really good. Uh, I think a lot of people sleep on those. But ultimately, it just kind of depends on what you want to do with the guitar. But the low output thing, um, yeah, I don't know. I would The first thing I would probably grab would be some Seth Lovers, because um, that just makes sense to me. Uh, I haven't asked about frets. Would I say they, are, they will not need ch changing a lot? I mean, you shouldn't have to change your frets. You might have to get them dressed. Uh, let's see. Epiphone doing a signature SG for Youngblood. Is that what that is? <laughs> uh, yeah, they're doing like an SG Junior, which is cool. Uh, oh, Lawrence Petros, the Coca Pelli. Let me pull that up. So, Lawrence, uh, Lawrence is a, a dear friend and a remarkable pedal designer and guitar player too he can really play and he just released he just released this which is uh just a really killer do it all sort of drive pedal uh, i've watched some of the demos jacob the visual guy did a great demo and there's a few others floating around but um the old version was just like gain and volume very simple and now he's added a uh, uh, three band EQ, a little voice toggle, and um, a uh, foot switch that switches between V1 and V2, which gets you uh, like a, a boost thing. Uh, but yeah, uh, Lawrence, he, man, he makes some great stuff. And, and he's a hell of a nice guy. So, you know, I love uh, holding my friends up. And in, in addition to that, let's see. My friend Chris Evans, who we talked about recently, it's not on here, but because I'm going to share the love with my friends, he is doing a birthday sale on his website today. Uh, he says he's doing $45 off all of his pedals, birthday sale today only, uh, ocepedals.com. Uh, <laughs> the sale's going to last before his brain meds kick in, so... Um, Go wish Chris a happy birthday and buy a pedal from his website because that would be be great. Clapton is Gog, which is funny. Um, Chris and I have talked much about the color of Les Paul plastics. I think these are his main pedals he's doing right now. The Wrench, Killer Fuzz, Lineman, Distortion, and then the, the Hammer, which is like a muff sort of thing. So yeah, check those out from our friends uh any other things that have been released uh dylan adams seth lovers are great had him in my gold top for years only changed them just to try something different not for lack of tone absolutely you know wound on the same machine by a guy who has been making pedals for a long time pedals pickups sorry <laughs> pedals on the brain uh so, Andrew, this is going to be PAF talk. Is there anyone making affordable PAF, PAF style pickups? You got a Les Paul Ultra 2. Those, I remember those. And um, uh, not a fan of the stock pickups, not much clarity. So, you know, I really kind of like... Let me just pull it up. Never remember what their web address is. Um... I really like, Andrew, 
GFS pickups. So my uh, PRS Vela, oddly enough, I did not like the stock pickup. And I wanted to experiment with just, I don't know, the stuff. And so I bought a bunch of, oops, I bought a bunch of their pickups just to see, you know, they're like 30, 30, 30 to 40 dollars a pickup, which is wild. I mean, these are all import made, but you know what? Uh, I think I got uh, the Vintage 59 and put that in the Vela. It sounds really good. It's 38 dollars. Um, they go out of stock pretty quick, but, the, but they have really great op options. There's, um, th they do like a professional line, which are a little bit more, yeah, these a little bit more, uh, retro inspired. These go out of, out of stock pretty frequently. Yeah. Put me on the waiting list, put me on the waiting list, but honestly, like for the money, GFS stuff is, is really good. Uh, and you're not going to break the bank. I mean, if, if Duncan's are a little too pricey for you and you know, Hey, I get it. Uh, it is, is worth considering these. I think they're, they're really good. Uh, do I have a favorite original Epiphone model, Tim? Uh, I like, we'll do a little more guitar chat and then, um, then I'll grab my guitar here, but let's see. Um, I love the Epiphone. Olympic. Um, so the Olymp, there it is. The Olympic was the melody maker, uh, for Epiphone. And for a while it had this weird offset sort of cutaway thing, uh, that, that happened in the, the mid sixties onward. Um, prior to that, they just looked like a Gibson, but I don't know. I just really like that. That's what the Joan Jett model is. What a what a, a funky guitar. And I also really like um the uh um these Olympics with the double pickups when they have the three and three. I don't like the Batwing headstock, but I like Coronets, uh I like the Sheraton, uh the Riv Riviera, um those guitars for sure. Uh fun guitars. Uh let's see. Looking to buy a Murphy, Murphy Lab 57 Junior or made to measure Cardinal Rudd 58 ratio double cut. Man, you'd be happy with either. I like double cuts personally. Um, you're about 75% sure that's who make the PRS import stuff on GFS? I think so. Uh, I think it's like, uh, what, G and B pickups? Okay. All right. So all caught up. Uh, I'm going to grab my guitar. So here she is. Uh, the Brazilian Murphy lab. I love this guitar. I'm, I'm, I like the, the more I play it, the more I'm like falling in love with it. This is a weird representation of what it truly sounds like going through, uh, the computer setup, but that's, that's the only way I can do this and, and make it, sound halfway decent and not uh scarier all of my neighbors <laughs> but um i uh i'm just i'm really happy with this but i have some pedals here and like it says up there get free usa shipping with coupon code olympus so we have an olympus here and i'm running this as clean as i can through the tone king plugin So let me know how loud that is. Um. I can mute my mic when, when we're playing, playing. Um, but this guitar is, is definitely, I mean, it's my favorite guitar. It, it's, it's kind of like, it became my favorite really quickly. So really excited uh, to get to know it and play it more. But I've got the pedal board here, like I said, Olympus. So I have an Olympus. We have a Herculean Deluxe. There's a Chupacabra right here. And then, of course, the Oracle. So uh, I'm going to just get some tones. We can just chat about stuff. But let me know if that's loud enough. It's not that loud in my head.
get a little oracle action. Let's say, can we talk more about the Celeste Paul? Send some questions and I'll answer them. There we go. A little. Some weird artifact thing happening from the. <laughs> There's a lot of wires crossing uh, over um, equipment. <laughs> uh, Dylan's using the Olympus into his Super Reverb. Man, that's a great combination. I used to do that at the Novo showroom because we had a vintage uh, Super in there and it sounded good. Rip some Chupacabra. Okay. So I got the Chupa here. I'm going to turn both the knobs to about 10 o'clock. <laughs> I am a top rapper. Yes. Uh, what's more tweed like, the Chupacabra or the Olympus? Um, I mean, they're, they're both tweed like in different ways. So. So the ZZ top thing on the Chupacabra, so I have the gain, I turned it up halfway, but it just really does have that sort of aggressive sort of thing. Like, oh, it just, you know, sounds like early ZZ thing. A lot of echo there, but yeah, it just kind of gets you in that ballpark. And with the Telecaster uh, or something therein, it's going to be a little more subdued. It kind of like hits a lot harder, the, the Chupacabra with a humbucker, as you would expect. Uh, the flame on this guitar is so right, Jacob. Thank you. Yes, it is. It's, it's really good. Uh, how much difference does the Brazilian make or is there too many variables? That's kind of the thing. It's so hard to know. Like, this guitar is super okay, off, right? <laughs> I have a gate on my mic, so you're not going to hear it. But the whole guitar is resonating. The neck is resonating. Uh, like, I can feel vibration. Like, strong vibration everywhere. And that's like, man, it's like, that's what you're looking for. And I don't know if it's just the Brazilian, but there does seem to be like this thing that happens where the notes kind of like, they just pop out a little more. Like if I turn the gain off, I, it's so hard to, 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 to like showcase it properly in this sort of uh, environment, but um, I'll give you more. I'll give you more. Is there... Is the red translucent up by the poker chip? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the red. Kind of hard to see. Yeah, there you go. You can see that flame poking through. Yeah, it's it's not. It really changes in the light. Uh, we will definitely grab the Telecaster. Are we still making pickups? Not at the moment. And we never made them. Porter did, making them for us, but... Yeah. How are the plastics on this guitar? They're fine. <laughs> uh, and how would I compare the Herculean to the full tone OCD? Okay, so that's a that's a good question. So I have the Herculean here. Uh, the Herculean, um, the left side, I don't think is too OCD. Like the right side, the Runestone is not. Eh, it's not really similar to that circuit. But when you crank the gain, I think it has a little bit more similar sound. So if I turn on the um, Turn on the, the runestone side. Here's the gain at like 10. If I turn the gain up, we'll kind of just, you'll hear it crank.
then it starts to get more of that OCD like thing. Now the OCD has a lot more um, gain and more bass for sure. Uh, this is D Tom's dark burst is the finish. So, uh, but with, this is the gain maxed out on the rune stone. <laughs> You can it's so it has a lot of a lot of gain, you know. Way too much gain for that. I was gonna do the there, the, there's a thing that he does. That's it. He does that once, and I always like that. And I, I fucked it up. <laughs> there's the back. It's pretty. What's my signal chain after the pedal board? I'm going right into my Universal Apollo, Universal Oli, Audio blah, Apollo Twin. Christ. Uh, <laughs> into uh, Logic where I'm running the, the Tone King plugin. So. But yeah, there's a lot of gain on the right side. <laughs> And, and it just like, just really, really rips. And these are not hot pickups, so. But that's like the max amount of gain. And that's only one side. You can run them both together and get more gain. So, a lot of fun. Uh, but then the Olympus, I haven't really talked about that. So... The Olympus is based on the Clark Gainster, and I feel like of all the Mythos pedals, it's like the one that's the most like misunderstood. <laughs> um, so turn the gain down, kind of use it as a bit of a boost. We'll see what happens here. <laughs> Just gives it a little bit of a lift. Uh, these are stock pickups, yes. But as we bring the gain up, the gain and the and the presence control are interactive, so they will change the voicing. So I put the gain at noon. starts to get a little darker and then if we bring it like to three o'clock really nice and it gets darker so you can bring the presence up so that's the presence at like nine o'clock noon And here's three o'clock on the tone or the presence. It sounds really good. It, it it just sounds good. It feels good to play. Uh, these custom buckers sound good. These are A5 magnet, and they're wound specifically for this run of guitars. So they're different. I don't know. I I, I keep going back and forth whether I should change them. Uh, I've been talking to John at Throwback, but we text. You know, we're we're, we're buddies now. Um, and, and maybe I'll change them, <laughs> but for now, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave it alone. Uh, so that's that's the Olympus turned up. We'll give it a little bit more volume. So it's not very loud. It's not a very loud um, pedal. This has a really nice sound. I'm going to turn that presence back down to about 1 o'clock. Mm -hmm. 
Uh. I've realized I was playing that wrong for like years. D- d- years. Um, Cause I was playing. Uh, uh, but it really goes. It goes down to that F. And I always mess it up. <laughs> um, it does kind of have a pearly thing, and I don't. I mean, I don't know. Jeez. <laughs> it's not a Zach Brolo's guitar until it's been modded. That's kind of true. I did change the switch nut because I don't like the stock one. Uh, and I have. What's the price on that bad boy? Which thing? The Olympus? One seventy nine. Uh available at Mythos Dealers Worldwide or at MythosPedals.com. Um But if you're talking about this guitar. Uh, so this guitar um I bought for my 40th birthday, which is not <laughs> until October. But I didn't want to miss out on this guitar. So the lovely guys at Wildwood, um, you know, they were like, hey, there's people coming to look at it. Uh, just, just letting you know, it might get gone. And so it didn't get bought. The guy bought a different one, uh, thank God. And I'd said, well, you know, shit, I, I guess I'm just going to have to get it. So, um, but but these guitars retail for sitting down um twenty thousand dollars so <laughs> i know um i think the guitar itself has much to do with the custom bucker sounding good that is absolutely it that is um that is absolutely it um if the guitar is good it's pickup proof uh my friend gary who works at carter vintage guitars said that last night he's like Guitar is great. It's pickup proof. It's like pickup proof. <laughs> I love it. Um, how heartbroken would I have been if that fellow who auditioned it bought it? I would have been pretty sad. I'm not buying anything else. Not like this. I mean, obviously. But, um, you know, there may be some more pedals or stuff throughout the year. But a lot of that, I kind of, you know, that's like mythos. It's like, you know, small tools and equipment. That's, uh, that's, that's research. This is just for me. Anyway, um, let's get back into the Herculean real quick. And then uh, <laughs> you bet you can make it sound like a $400 guitar. Trust me, I can too. Um, give it more of a slap from the Olympus. Let's see here. There's a lot of reverb on this uh, Tone King plugin. There we go. Uh, we will definitely do some videos through the two rocks. Um, I absolutely will. We're figuring it out, how to do it and not uh, annoy the planet. Because <laughs> these things are loud, loud, loud. Uh, anyway, so this is not a write-off, actually. <laughs> you know, I don't, I actually don't write off a lot of my instruments because I don't want to um, schedule them on my taxes. Government doesn't need to know about this. So, uh, Herculean side, gain down, and we'll get to tweaking. That's the gain off on the Herculean, and it's on. The pedal is on. There's the gain up to nine uh, o'clock. Ah. There we go. It's really hard to play at this angle and like talk. All this 
just junk in my face. <laughs> So that's uh, the gain at, at nine. Uh, the clarity, clarity is at noon, and the bass is like at a little past noon. Here's the gain on the Herculean side at noon. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, gain at three o'clock. <laughs> uh, and then we'll max out the gain. My wife told me to buy this because she's the best. Uh, with so many overdrives and fuzz pedals in the market, does it mean people don't play clean anymore? No, people do. <laughs> but that's a, you know, it's a good thought. Which people like pedals. Pedals are, uh, pedals are fun. Uh, but okay, so that was the range on that one. But the, the big fun of the Herculean is combining them. So, uh, so, let me turn that bass down on the Herculean side. And then the order switcher will flip which one hits the hits watt first. And so this is runestone into the Herculean. So that's the gain pushed or the, the, sorry, the volume pushed about one gain at about 10 o'clock. And then the same settings on the runestone. Runestone on. I'm really like a G pentatonic right now, G minor. Uh, and then if we flip the order. So that's Herculean hitting the the runestone side, it's like a lot tighter. Other way. That sort of thing. But yeah, uh, I can grab this Telecaster and we can play that. Hopefully the strings are... Uh, stretch it out. I restrung it not too long ago. Uh, don't forget, use coupon code Olympus to get free USA shipping this weekend at mythospedals.com. But here, let me pedal mute, volume down. Ah. Okay. So. <clears throat> so this guitar is actually going to be on a video that's coming out. Monday, but this is my Ventera, my Ventera Tele, and I modded it. So, um, you'll see all this in the video, uh, but it now has, I treated the neck with the Montes Montespresso, <laughs> the Brazilian butt lift, yes it was, uh, neck got the Montespresso treatment. Uh, changed the saddles to fender compensated brass, which I liked way more than the steel. Rewired it like a Les Paul, uh, like a Les Paul Jr., I guess. So how the tone circuit's wired, it has the Mythos selectable tone cap set at 01. So it's a really nice honky thing. Rewired the switch, uh, normal switch. It's just a three-way. I don't like four-way switches. And then um, 
The pickups are Seymour Duncan Labreas. I bought these from uh, Chicago Music Exchange. They sound really good. Let me tune this. Yes, yeah, Chris, happy birthday. Happy birthday. I already told him about your sale. Tuner mute. Sorry about this. I guess we're all used to it. And there we go. <laughs> These pickups are a lot of a lot of punch, which is fun. Uh, okay, all right. So, um, just like before, we'll just run through some of these pedals. So, neck pickup. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Herculean was on. That sounds more right. Here's the both. And uh, the bridge. Still feels a little out, but uh, Chupacabra, gain at noon. Really tell how clean the the uh, plug-in is. be out still Oof. <laughs> fresh strings close enough for rocking um the chupacabra is awesome uh so hitting the chupacabra with another pedal it, it works really well so if we use something like the olympus set a little dark so that still is the chupacabra uh this les paul is dark's uh, tom's dark burst then we hit it with the olympus Just sounds good. Is the Olympus off? On. Needs uh, some time to stretch, but yeah, sounds really great. Um, it's a, such a really. <laughs> uh, it's a, it was a great guitar. But then these La Brea pickups just really, just a really, that's the Herculean side of the Herc. Sounds good. Yeah, the Olympus and, and a Telecaster is kind of like, can't miss. I don't know any Ty Tabor riffs. Is the Olympus? The 
I check out a, a, the one of the Les Pauls or the Bigsby? No, uh, I don't like Bigsby's on Les Pauls. And if I'm being honest, I wasn't intending on checking out the Brazilian. They just brought it in the room. <laughs> they got me. They knew. Greg, have a great weekend. So, go back to the Herc. Um, learn some, yeah. It, it's just a really good guitar, so I'm really happy with it. And I think the video is fun, the modding video, just like the Epiphone. And somehow it's a lot longer, but I did do playing samples, so you can hear. So you can actually hear it before and after I did the whole thing. Oh, oh, the, the tone knob. So for those that are curious about what the, the smaller capacitor, um, <laughs> the smaller capacitor in the, um, uh, in the tone circuit on the mythos selectable tone cap, what it sounds like. So with some heat, right? Here's all, everything all the way up. <laughs> And I have it at the 01 setting, all the way off. I don't have any other pedals like doing that. It's just the tone knob. So it kind of just gives you like instant big like 70s rock sounds and almost has like a veritone thing because it's just so cool and you can kind of like find a little bit of a different shade with it uh, with the tone knob. So again, here's here. Let's go to something like the Chupacabra. Let's get a little. I'm just going to goose it all the way up. So it's kind of got a, you know, big sort of fuzzy thing happen. So with it, the volume all the way up, tone all the way up, you have this sound. All the way off. I feel like it needs a little more, so I'm going to hit it with, uh, we'll hit it with the runestone boost. Yeah. Very significant difference compared to the normal capacitor. It just it just gives you a really wacky, uh, different sound, and I'm really uh, in love with it because <laughs> I don't often use tone knobs, and like you can still, like if you're if you're doing something a bit more, you know, normal. So here's the tone all the way up. So it kind of like will kind of like shift everything with this mid-range honk, but it's really easy, especially in, in a Tele style guitar. Just open it up and and change the the tone cap setting with this uh, the Mythos selectable tone cap. Here you guys, I'm just gonna show you guys. So I'm, so I'm talking about it. Pull it up here, and then we're probably gonna get out of here in just a second. So if there's any other last minute questions, hit me up. But yeah, basically, it's a tiny little circuit board about the size of the um. Of like a paper and oil capacitor, just flat. 
And uh, yeah, here are the settings. So you have 0022, 0047, 01, 022, 047. So you have basically 022, Gibson Classic Cap Value. 047 is basically the modern Fender. Um, if you switch on, you can and you can switch any combination. So you can turn like the 01, 022, and 047 on to get a higher capacitance rating and uh be more like a traditional old school fender get close to like 0.1 um not quite but you're kind of getting there uh but yeah really cool and different and yes jacob it was absolutely the the eldred mod in the um esquire did that but it's different it doesn't feel quite as like huh as um as as everything else so nick thank you i appreciate that well Thanks for hanging. Uh, here, let me mute this. I want to hang this guitar up. We're going to say our goodbyes, and then I'm going to pack Nick's order. I see your order right there, Nick. I see my phone lighting up. Uh, I want to get that packed, get that moving. And, yeah, so thanks for hanging, everybody. I appreciate all of you guys uh, spending your Friday mornings here with me, uh, normally Matthew at Mythos HQ. Matthew is, um, like I said, his fam is sick. So he's hanging with them, trying not to get sick himself or not bring sickness to the shop because I'm going to Chicago next week. Um, don't, I don't need that. You know, I don't need to get sick. But anyway, uh, <laughs> needs more paper and oil. Yeah, yeah, I, you know, it's funny. I, I didn't think... Because on the selectable tone cap, it is just, you know, surface mount caps to be that small. And I thought, you know, are these going to sound good? And then, <laughs> you know, they sound great. I, I think we get so in our head with all this stuff. And I get it. Like, I love that there are Lux replica Bumblebee caps in this. There should be, right? You know, that's what was in these guitars in 1959. And I, I love that. But... I, I think these selectable tone caps just sound great. <laughs> Go listen to some King's X. Okay, I'll try it. It's not something I've like actively avoided. I just haven't listened to it. Um, but anyway, um, I want to get some of these orders moving for everybody. Um, there's been a few that's hit during the live stream, and I appreciate it. I appreciate all you guys hanging out with me. Don't forget to check out uh, mythospedals.com coupon code olympus for the weekend and uh yeah well uh, telly video will be dropping on monday so keep your eyes peeled for that and uh, i hope everyone has a great weekend don't forget to send me some uh, ama friday questions i'll try to get to as many of those as i can you guys usually um flood the uh the inbox which i appreciate um but yeah everyone have a great weekend and um yeah take it easy see ya